What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game or just need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there if you want a few recommendations on what players you could sign for a team that you may be using Mate, in career mode done. this year and yeah, so yeah, in today's yeah. episode of here's time for guys we're going to take a look at the most successful team in Bundesliga history and the most dominant team in German football for well over a decade now. Yep, you know who they are. It's Bayern Munich, the German giants of the Allianz Arena. Uh, now, of course, under charge of Julian Nagelsmann, the very exciting young and I mean very young head coach this guy is just 34 years old there are players in Bayern's first team who are actually older than the head coach he's a very young exciting manager to look out for Bayern had him announced as their manager to start off this season he's guided them to yet another Bundesliga title and in the game with Julian Nagelsmann or your Bayern Munich team you're asked to win the treble. Yep, this is a fantastic Bayern Munich side. It's no wonder they've been the most dominant side in German football for well over a decade now. It's absolutely fantastic. It is a five-star team with world-class players. Manuel Neuer between the sticks, 90 overall, and club captain Robert Lewandowski, of course, the Polish striker, who is just one of the all-time great goal scorers over the past decade or so. You've got some excellent uh, players in their primes right now as well, such as the uh, French centre-half, Lucas Hernandez. You've got Kingsley Coman, Serge Gnabry and Leroy Sane as your wingers. One of the most underrated players in world football, I think, in my opinion as well, in Joshua Kimmich, one of the most intelligent players in European football in my book. Um, it's, it's an amazing team. I mean, as I'm running you through here, you see all the players in the mid to high 80s and a couple in the 90s as well. Yeah, this is an unbelievable Bayern Munich side. It's a five star team in its own right but it can get younger yet yeah, there are a few seniors in this team that will need to get long-term replacements for such as Manuel Neuer at 35 years old and also Robert Lewandowski who has of course announced he wants to join Barcelona this summer if not he'll wait until his contract runs down and aim to join him next season yep seems like he feels he's done all he can at Bayern Munich and he's looking for a new challenge now with Bayern you have a few players to deal with come the end of the year there's only one player I would give a new contract to that's Nicholas Saul he has a to join Borussia Dortmund in real life so for realism if you want to sell him then look to try and sell him to Dortmund to keep the realism going if you're not interested in that keep Nicholas Saul he's in his mid-20s 84 overall solid tall strong center half definitely worth keeping as part of your back line uh, but I did put three players on the transfer list you had veteran goalkeeper Tolisso and also uh, uh, Chupo Moting as well the striker too as you'll see we sold Tolisso for just over 20 million pounds to Leicester City this is actually a really good Good deal for both clubs I feel here to least he's a decent player but he is now probably not going to get any better at 80 overall and that's a good signing for Leicester for 20 mil as well I thought it was really cool but the new target and the new signing I'll bring for Bayern Munich is this guy right here now you look to the first team you saw an abundance of quality in basically every single position but the one position the one player that was sub 80 overall you would have seen him at right back it's Benjamin Pavard the young Frenchman or well the, the Frenchman he's not as young now but the Frenchman um, is a fabulous defender he spent time playing center half and right back as well but you can get better than Pavard and you can get younger as well and in my opinion because Bayern Munich have such a big transfer budget of around 100 and 105 million pounds after wage budget operation something like that you might as well go for the very best in the game and you know who that is it's Trent Alexander-Arnold at Liverpool of course when this guy burst on the scene I think everyone knew he was going to have a good career but he's really developed his game under Jurgen Klopp Klopp having to sell a star player to Bayern that's got to feel bad when he had to do that with Dortmund so many years ago but this is a tremendous right back he's 87 overall 22 22 years old yet 87 overall and he's got 90 
potential as well. Yep, really fantastic right back. Very, very solid. And of course, great when going forward as well. He's got high medium work rates, great stamina. I actually think he should be considered a little bit quicker than the game has him as. He's not slow, but I thought the game would have him a little bit quicker than he is. But we know what Trent is all about. You know, his, his vision, his range of passing, his cross field balls, as we know, absolutely superb. And his creativity when going forward is just brilliant. Trent Alexander-Arnold, it'll cost you upwards of 100 million. You're probably looking at around 110 to 120 million to get him, but if you've got the cash, and you will do with buying, bring him in. I mean, this guy is the star, and he's going to be a star for all the years you're at Bayern Munich. He's eight ratings higher than Pavard and a few years younger as well. Definitely bring Trent in to bolster Bayern's back line. Um, so we sold Chupo Moting uh, to Manchester City. I thought this was quite an interesting deal here. Five million pounds we got for Eric. I didn't think Guardiola would be interested. I thought he was going to go for Haaland instead. Settle for Chupo Moting. But the player would replace Chupo Moting with is this guy right here. Now, if you are doing a buying career mode, it's always great to get some good young talent to replace the seniors. You know that Robert Lewandowski is not going to be in his prime forever, or so you'd think, but the guy just continues to defy father time. But you will want a long-term successor for your Polish striker. They will probably look to shift on in two or three years. The guy I'd recommend is this guy right here. He's really making a name for himself right now. It's Kareem Adeyemi of RB Salzburg. He's a tremendous young German talent, 19 years old, 75 overall, and he's got 87 potential as well. We've done dynamic potential no reason you can't get him to 90 overall in the first season it'll be just as good as Chupo Moting who's your backup striker but you know that Lewandowski is barely going to get a rest because he is just one of the great strikers in European football so of course whoever's your bench striker won't play many minutes he's just there as an impact sub to replace Lewandowski when he gets a little bit too tired in late game situations but Kareem is just a great option because he's so quick and I always say you want a quick striker off the bench he's got some okay physicals his strength isn't too bad either high medium work rates four star skill moves and a good finisher of the ball as well as a backup striker he's over 10 years younger than Chupo Moting but the same overall with of course far higher potential as well to replace Eric I think he's the best option out there because again you don't need to sign someone that's got like 82 83 overall for like 50 60 million pounds because in the first year or two they're not going to play much. If you keep the 4-2-3-1, Lewandowski's always going to keep him on the bench. So you might as well look for someone cheaper and younger with better potential as well. That's why I'd really recommend Kareem Adeyemi. Very cheap. You can get him for close to the valuation or perhaps just a little bit over it. You probably won't need to spend more than 13, 14 mil to get him, but he's going to be worth a lot more than that at full potential. So definitely worth bringing in as your backup striker. And um, we did sign a, uh, did decide to sign a couple of youngsters uh, after the signing there um, of uh, Adeyemi. Uh, I recommend this guy. It's Jan Fielman. He's a 72 rated 19 year old uh, German winger. Um, you know, again, high, high work rates. Very, very good. And just a player to sit in your squad already in your reserves to fill out the squad depth, but a young German talent to keep your eye on for the years that go by. And also, I would recommend bringing in a new midfielder as well. Now, you saw earlier we had Mark Rocker on the transfer list. I accidentally said that we had a veteran goalkeeper, but that's for a future who designed for episode. It's Mark Rocker who was also on the transfer list alongside Talisa and Chupo Moting. But the Spanish midfielder isn't bad at 76 overall, but in his mid-20s, he does grow free ratings, but ultimately, you can get better and you can get younger. The player out of place him with to sit in your reserves and be there for emergency cover in a CM role is this guy right here. It's Suat Sardar of Hertha Berlin. He's 24 years old. You can get him for a round evaluation. 77 overall makes him better than Mark Rocha now and he's also got higher potential as well. He's got 82 potential so grows five ratings. He'll become a really solid midfielder and what I like about Sardar is he's very good in pretty much everything. He does have the injury prone tag so look out for that but otherwise he's totally fine sitting deeper, going further forward or right through the heart of midfield. I love those sort of players who can play all through the spine of the team. Deeper, further forward or right in the middle of the pitch. Serdar can do that. Very, very good player. And I personally would give him the ball with the field development plan. Get his defensive work credit from medium to high. So he's got high, high work rates. That'll make him great on both the defensive and the offensive end. And again, right through the middle as well. Um, so the final signing I got was uh, this guy right here. If you watch my Armenia Bielfeld career mode, 
said earlier this year, you know all about him, is of course the fourth striker, Jamie Llewellyn. You can get this guy for close to the valuation. And again, we sold Chupo Moting, so we had a young striker, Tillerman, in our reserves. But you might want someone with a little bit more quality, just in case you have an injury crisis. Though, of course, Muller could fill in up top, as we know. But Jamie Llewellyn's a good young forward. He's 20 years old. He can play on the wing or up top. The choice is yours, though, personally. I'd have him as an out-and-out -out striker with a decent starting finishing stat and a decent starting strength stat as well. And he's not too small either. We bought him in, and as a young striker, he's a good option to have. So in the end with Bayern, we only sold the two players, Chupo Moting and Talisa, with 25 million. Though, of course, we did give Mark Rocha uh, to Hertha Berlin in exchange for Suat Serdar. But you look at the talent coming in here, some great young German talent, as you would have seen. Uh, Karim Adeyemi, of course, being a standout. Suat Serdar is there as well. But the star coming into the first 11, Trent Alexander Arnold really bolsters the back line and improves the first team as well. And when you look at the quality this Bayern team has, you don't need to do too much with it. It's a five-star team. It doesn't need a major rebuild. Yes, you've got some older players in Muller and Neuer and Lewandowski, but really in the first couple of years, you're totally fine. So as you'll see, we simulated the end of the season with Bayern as we always do and see if we get those really strong objectives of winning the treble. And as you can see... Well, there were two cup finals. We had the DFB Pokal final against Dortmund, which we won, and the Champions League final versus Chelsea. Deja vu, indeed. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Chelsea beat Bayern in the Champions League final on penalties. Where have I seen that before? Because it seems awfully familiar. Yeah, we didn't win the treble in the end, unfortunately. Chelsea beat us on penalties, not for the first time. And uh, But you'll see in uh, German football, though, we did win the Bundesliga. Uh, two points clear at Borussia, which in Gladbach quite a great season, there, to be fair. But did indeed win the Bundesliga once again. How many titles have Bayern Munich got now? And we also won the DFB Pokal as well. You'll see we won the Super Cup at the start of the season. Doesn't count towards the objectives, but I thought I'd show you anyway. So technically, it it was a domestic treble if you want to count the Super Cup, but I don't. But it was a domestic double regardless. And as you'll see in the Champions League, we finished runners-up in our group, uh, made it through uh, Juventus in the last 16 with a big arrow scoreline, beat Sporting Lisbon, also knocked out into Milan. But unfortunately, again, you'll see came up short on the penalty shootout to Chelsea. Yeah, I think I've seen that before. Even so, it was a success in uh, the domestic competitions. And whilst the Champions League would be considered a failure, when you consider the fact that Bayern this year were knocked out by Villarreal in the quarterfinals of the Champions League and are not in the DFB Pokal final either, I would say personally that's a good season for season one. Yep, I think that's really really solid. It's it's not as good as it possibly could have been, of course, the treble, which is what the board wanted, but ultimately, if you're going to win two trophies in your first season and continue your stronghold on German football right now and get to the Champions League final, only missing out on an iconic treble on a penalty shootout to the holders... Yeah, I'd call that a good season, in my opinion. Again, this is this is such a class team. It, it's a five-star team. And if you're a new player to FIFA career mode, they're a great choice and a great team to work with because it doesn't need major change in the first season, so you're not going to be overwhelmed with the amount of stuff you need to do. It's got some really talented youngsters in the team as well. And again, Joshua Kimmich, one of my favourite players in European football, so criminally underrated, I feel. Never really regarded as a star, perhaps because of his play style, but he really is just so important to this buying system. But again, lots of great players in the mid-20s. And again, they do have some ageing players to shift on in the near future. Muller, Neuer, and Lewandowski as well, of course. That'll be fun to replace those guys as the years go by. But again, as a starter team, Bayern Munich, really great choice for any new career mode player, I'd say. It's not a daunting task. It's not overwhelming. It's a challenging first season being asked to win a treble, but it's a really fun team to use. And again, with those three ageing players to replace, you'll have a lot of fun finding out those future replacements as the years go by. But that will end today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys. Big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For. Let's stay in the Bundesliga with the next couple episodes. And I'll see you for the next one very soon.